Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be making sourdough. Now if you don't know what sourdough is, it's basically bread that has been made using wild yeast, not uh, normal baker's yeast that we find. It's a bit more labour intensive, but it creates a really complex flavour in the bread, which if you've tried it, is incredible. So uh, we're going to try and make that. It's my first time making it, so uh, you can follow along, see how well I do, like learn from my mistakes if I make any. And yeah, I guess without much further ado, let's get started. So, there's only two ingredients uh, you need to add to make your starter. One, flour and water. It's very simple. Uh, the flour is the uh, growing medium that the yeast will eat. The water, of course, is needed to help it reproduce. And yeah, the wild yeast is natural, naturally present in the flour, in the air, so we shouldn't need to add any. Um, so yeah, we just add it together, let it rise, and continue to feed it. So in terms of flour, for what I'm using for the starter, I'm using organic uh, wholemeal Khorasan, or Kamut. Uh, it's important to use organic. Uh, the non-organic can have fungicides in it, which will mean you don't, there's not going to be as much wild yeast in there, which will really limit our starter. Uh, I'm using wholemeal. It's what I have uh, kicking around most of the time. Uh, in terms of amounts, you're going to want equal parts flour to water. So um, I'm using 200 grams of flour and 200 grams of water. Uh, it's what most people want. You could use more. Um, depends how much you could, bread you're going to be making. I think 200 grams should be fine for me at the moment. Bear in mind we're going to add to it as we feed it. So uh, it, it may not look like a lot now, but it will grow. So we can start to mix. The other important thing to note is that when you're making uh, sourdough, which relies on you know the yeast to grow, it's important you don't use a, mes a metal container. We're using plastic, you can use glass. Uh, if you use metal, uh, it can um, react. Once the yeast starts forming, it kind of creates an acidic environment that can react with the metal. So yeah, stick to plastic or glass and you should be fine. Mix thoroughly. So, we have our mixture, it's all been mixed up, and what we've got to do is cover it. Uh, you can use any sort of lid really, I'm going to use a bit of clean for it. Now, you want to cover it kind of loosely, you're just trying to stop dust getting in there really, and other wild yeast in your kitchen, but you want to be able to let it breathe, really important. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, you need to store it somewhere, uh, room temperature, um, somewhere that, you know, the rule of thumb is somewhere you would want to be. Uh, this is like my kitchen, it's a nice temperature in here. So we're going to leave it in the tried and tested top of the fridge. And uh, we'll come back tomorrow and see if it's changed. Okay, day two left it on my fridge for a full day and I think something's going on in there it's uh, it looks a little bit more bubbly some of those bubbles were left uh, from the mixing but it looks like something is going on this bubble here kind of makes me think there's some activity going on inside but anyway we're gonna feed it uh, to feed it, you remove half the mixture that's already in there uh, and replace it with 50% um, uh, of the water and flour we added. So I added 200 grams of flour and 200 mils of water. So you're going to remove half of that and replace it with 100 grams of flour and 100 mils of water. So it doesn't necessarily smell that different? It's hard to know. There's a little liquid layer on the top, but anyway, we're going to remove the half without a bubble. Maybe that's the, uh, the more active side. Okay, then we just add 100 grams of flour.
and uh, 100 ml of water. And mix thoroughly. Okay, so it's fully mixed. As you can see, just cover it up like we did the last time. Nice and loosely. And stick it back. Fridge. So, I wasn't going to blog for a few days. Uh, I kind of figured the yeast would take a while to get going. Uh, it was kind of expanding a bit, but you know, taking its time. I did the feed this morning, uh, as you saw in the video, when I figured, hey, in a few days I'll get back on track and keep feeding it. But it's the evening, and remember, it was about here in the morning, and it is going crazy. Let's see if I can. <laughs> It's enormous. It's probably quadrupled in size, I would say. So, I think I'll probably just squeeze all the air out. Oh, it's breathing. And uh, feed it in the morning. But wow, that's the power of wild yeast for sure. So, we're at the end of day three, well, coming to the end, it's not even six o'clock, and again, I wasn't expecting to blog, because it's only day three, not even the end of day three, uh, but, more experimentation, um, as you know from my previous video, we are removing half of the starter and replacing it with flour to feed it, but I was kind of saving all the bits I was removing, and because it was so frothy and uh, and yeasty, I thought, well, let's try and make a loaf. Uh, now, there wasn't much. I had to add a bit of flour to it to kind of get it to the right consistency. But I made something, it, uh, it raised, and now we're going to cut it open. It could be awful, it could be great. Who knows? Let's see. Very nervous. Ah, it looks really good. Very even, no big holes, but it's a very kind of. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in focus, but hopefully you can see something. It's really got that sour taste, and this is a very good rise. Kamut isn't the most glutinous of flowers, but. Um, even with normal baker's yeast, it can be quite uh, hard to get a really good rise out of. Um, but it was really strange, actually. When I was kneading the bread, it, um, it really felt like white flour. It was the weirdest thing. And I think it must be something to do with the wild yeast breaking down the gluten uh, as it um, uh, grows. It was very strange, but it had a real different texture. So, uh, well, I, I guess we should taste it. Uh, and see what we made. Uh, Veronica, my camera woman, I'll taste it and then she can have some. Let's see. Sour dough. And it's not even been three days. That's crazy. Okay, so day five, and things have slowed down a bit. Uh, as you'll remember, it was kind of bubbling over almost the top, and we made some bread, which was really good. But since then, it's kind of gone quiet. And yeah, I was a bit concerned for a while that maybe it had died or something bad had happened. Uh, but no, there's still bubbles forming. When I did some research online, and apparently someone suggested uh, on a sourdough forum that uh, after day three, that's when kind of all the necessarily the, the yeast you may not want, the bad yeasts, will be going a bit crazy. 
uh, and then after that, it's sort of uh, it's the good yeast forming in a more acidic environment, which are a little bit slower. So uh, we're still feeding it, uh, and we're going to hope it's still um, still good. It smells very different. It's much more vinegary, and I will say on day three it had a bit more of a gassy smell to it. Now it smells uh, a bit more like vinegar. So things are changing. It's still alive. But, uh, yeah, interesting. I think because of this, we'll keep going till day seven and um, see how we progress. But, yeah, interesting. I mean, we're definitely working with something that is alive. And hopefully we're going to definitely get some, some more bread out of this. Uh, I think it's pretty hard to kill a starter, but you never know. So we're making some more leftover starter bread. This has got about... 165 grams of starter in each, about 450 grams of uh, white and brown uh, flour, that's spelt, that's just normal wheat on the left, and some salt and a few spoons of oil. That's it. We're going to let this rise for about a day, I think, and we'll see how they look tomorrow. So, the morning of day six. And I was a bit worried it had slowed down a lot, but we were still hoping that uh, the yeast was uh, transitioning into its healthiest state and the state we want. And I think we were right, and our patience paid off. Today it has at least doubled in size. It's got that fermented look that we were looking for. Uh, starting to smell different as well, it's not quite as acidic this morning. Um, so things are growing in the right way, that's good news. The lesson here, be patient with it. It may look a bit slow, it may look like it's uh, a bit dead, but trust me, it's still growing. As long as you've got bubbles in the first place, it's on its right track, so just be patient. The breads we made last night are rising well. They'll probably go in this evening. In the oven, but yeah, that's not even from the new, the the finished starter. So yeah, good progress all around, I say. So it's been about 22 hours, and the breads are ready to go in the oven. Both got a really good rise. Yeah, I'm impressed with this yeast. So the bread's out the oven. Time to cut it. See what it looks like. This is the white. It's pretty cool. It smells mellower than my first bread. Draw the whole meal. It's not quite as big as the other one, but it smells really good. What do you think about the smell? Mmm, very nice and southery. Alright, let's try it, I guess. So let's start with the white. <clears throat> really good texture. getting mellower than I was expecting. It's not super aggressively sour like my first bread was. But the taste is really nice. Let's see what you think of it. Okay, this is bread number one. I'm gonna be doing this only ever, forever. So out of ten? Eleven. <laughs> Awesome. Let's try the whole meal, I guess. We should need a palate cleanser or something. It's a bit of a stronger flavour, this one. The whole milk. As I guess you would expect, but 
bit more sour, but again, really good flavour. Let's see if we try this. Yeah, you can definitely say it's wholemeal, almost white bread. I guess white bread is definitely better for most of the people. So I'm the same, but wholemeal is healthier, you know. So make up your choice, but both good, really good. So, sourdough test, experiment. Success, I think. The starter is still going a bit crazy. Uh, it's, it's really sort of frothing now. I mean, this is the end of day six, I think, if I'm counting correctly. And yeah, it started um, going a bit nuts, as you can probably see. It's just all air in there. So, still smells quite strong of vinegar and flour and fermentation. Yeah, it's, it's a starter for sure. And uh, if you have any doubts, it raises bread. So uh, I think this will go in the fridge from now on and I'll be feeding it about once a week. Sort of keep it going and keep using it. Uh, yeah, maybe start up another one, but sourdough.